If you want to get good at NES Tetris, there's this thing called DAS that you're supposed to master. Delayed Auto Shift. DAS is really just a fancy term for the auto-repeat behavior in Tetris. You can tap left or right to move one spot at a time, or you can hold left or right and the auto-repeat will move it more quickly for you. But auto-repeat has an initial delay. After the first bip, there's a quarter second delay before the auto-repeat kicks in. That's the delay in delayed auto shift. Here at level 0, where each piece takes 16 seconds to reach the bottom, the auto repeat delay just isn't a big deal. But competition play starts at level 18 and frequently moves on to level 19, where the pieces take 0.6 seconds to reach the bottom. Here I'm trying to move the pieces alternating left and right, just to show how much that initial delay gets in the way. Once we're a couple rows up, the delay is eating up most of our time, and we can't even get the pieces where they need to go. The delay makes level 19 pretty much unplayable. But there's a trick. With careful timing, you can suppress the delay and keep it suppressed, which makes it look more like this. Listen to the difference. With the delay, each piece goes bip, 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 bip. Without the delay, each piece just goes bip, 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 bip. And you can see how much higher you can stack if you get rid of the delay. This is what people mean when they refer to DAS, the technique. It's really the opposite of DAS. It's DAS suppression, or maybe undelayed auto shift. I've been wanting to learn how to do this technique, but I didn't really understand how to practice it, or what it feels like, or really anything about it, until I got this book. Among other things, this book does a great job of explaining how DAS actually works. But even more interesting, it refers to these emulator plugins that you can use to visualize DAS interactively. So I followed the links, and they're gone. The internet seems to have completely forgotten that these plugins ever existed. Even the Wayback Machine doesn't know about them. I'm sure these plugins are out there somewhere, but I decided it'd be more fun to write my own anyway. FCEUX is an NES emulator that has features like a debugger and a memory watcher and the ability to load Lua scripts as plugins that run in the background. And these plugins can do things like read data from the emulator's memory and overlay text and other graphics on top of the screen and do all this within the context of the emulator's event loop. And of course people on the internet have figured out at least some of the memory structure of NES Tetris, which gives us some leads for what memory addresses we should watch if we want to understand how DAS works. Note how much screen real estate is wasted at the top left with a reminder that we're playing A-type, which just means the normal game mode that everybody plays. Nobody needs that, so I wrote a plugin that just covers that up with my own display and added a d-pad so that we can see what the controller is doing. And then the interesting bit, a DAS meter. This represents an integer in memory that the game is using to implement auto-repeat. This variable ranges from 0 up to 16, and understanding this variable is the key to understanding DAS. The rules are pretty simple. When you press left or right, the counter drops to 0 and the piece moves one spot. As long as you hold left or right, the counter increases one value per frame. If the counter reaches 16, it drops back to 10, and the piece moves again. And when you finally release left or right, the counter stops where it is. In slow motion, here's what single taps look like. Because we keep pressing left or right, the counter keeps going back to zero, and since we're never holding it for very long, the counter value never gets very high. But here's what it looks like when we auto-repeat. On each new press, the value goes back to zero, and then it has to rise all the way up to 16, but after that it only has to rise 6 frames per step. That's where the slow and then fast behavior comes from. When the counter is at 10 or above, we consider DAS to be charged because it's ready to move a piece quickly without that long delay. Our meter is green when it's charged and red when it isn't. Our goal is to keep the meter charged as much as possible, but how can we do that if every time we press left or right, the meter drops to zero? Well, there's a loophole we haven't discussed yet, the entry delay. Entry delay is the brief moment between when one piece lands and the next one appears. The entry delay is short, it's normally 10 frames or up to 18 when there's a line clear animation. And the loophole is, if you press left or right precisely during that entry delay, the meter doesn't reset. By press, I mean the initial pressing of the button. 
you can hold the button past the entry delay and you can release it whenever you want. What matters here is when you initiate pressing of the button. So let's try it. Back on level 19, let's do the alternating left and right thing and try to only initiate presses during the entry delay. So far so good. Oop, messed up there. But now we're good again. So let's see that in slow motion. This time pay attention to the DAS meter, the entry delay indicator, and the D-pad display. As long as we initiate the press during the delay, the meter will stay charged. That one's good. Good. Still good. But here we miss it, so the meter drops to zero. We call this losing DAS or losing charge. Now I have the timing back and we're good again. So this is all fine if you want to push all the way to one side or the other, but in Tetris we generally want to put pieces in specific spots. The beginner way is to just tap back and forth, uh, correcting yourself until you find the place you want. But if we want to keep the meter charged, we have to press during the entry delay, hold until just the right moment, and then release. We have one shot at it. If we get it right, the meter will stay charged. But if we overshoot or undershoot, then we'll have to tap to correct, and then we've lost the charge. When you get this right, we call this a skill drop, and I'm not very good at them. Here in slow motion are some skill drops and then some misses. Here I'm keeping the meter charged, getting the timing right on each piece, pressing at the top and then releasing at just the right moment. But here I overshoot, and so I have no choice but to tap again to correct, which clears out the meter, slows down the next piece, and gets me out of the rhythm. Maintaining skill drops consistently is tricky. So anyway, this is my DAS explainer plugin, and playing around with it interactively has really helped me understand how DAS works. But what I want is to get better at DAS the technique. So I made a different plugin, the DAS Trainer. This is sort of a mini game or a meta game overlaid on top of Tetris. First, it gives a very clear indicator every time you lose DAS charge. So your goal is to keep that red frame from ever appearing. As long as you keep charge, you'll never see it. Next, it keeps track for each piece whether or not the meter was charged for the entire drop of that piece. If so, the drop is good, and if not, the drop is bad. And finally, it keeps score for you, tracking the total number of good drops, the current streak, and the best streak of the current game. So this is my practice tool now. I'm using it to practice keeping the meter charged and to increase my consistency of skill drops. I'm still lousy, but I'm hoping that with these tools I'm in a place to improve more quickly. There are other important aspects to DAS that I didn't cover here. Wall charges, the last second tap, and the red fireball technique. If you're interested, I do recommend this book. I have a link to the book and to my own plugins and to other references in the video description. Thanks for watching.